Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Beginner's Mind, Art Mind. And this video, we're going to be talking about breaking the surface, breaking the surface of that blank page in your journal, the blank sheet or canvas on your easel, just making those first initial marks to break the surface and get over that fear of the white page. So yesterday, I got started with this. I got out my large, long brushes, long handles, and my Conte pencil. And what these are is they're just put onto, um, taped onto long skewers, barbecue skewers. And this one is, this brush is actually on a dowel, taped to a more sturdy dowel so I can put more pressure on it. So I got these out and I was raring to go and I just had some sheets and um, got some mark making on and sprayed with some water and got some movement going on the canvas and woke up really excited this morning to get back into the studio and start again. I'm on my second cup of coffee and I have stalled. It's another low energy day. It's really gray and dark out. That means it's dark in the studio. And I came into these marks that I made yesterday. I'm not at all feeling the same energy about them that I was yesterday. So I need to, um, I find when that happens, what I need to do is I need to plunge into something just to get me going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gesso another sheet of paper and then I'm gonna divide it either by tearing or by just making marks in it into smaller squares. And then I'm gonna start by making some marks on that and see if, see if that can get me back into the mood. I mean, the surface is already broken on these. I should be really excited to move back in, but I'm just not feeling it for these paintings today. So I'm gonna break the surface again on some smaller sheets and see what happens. Okay, wish me luck. First, let's take a look back at the initial steps I took yesterday at breaking the white surface. I gessoed the page. I took my Conte pencil that's on a long stick and did some really wild mark making, some very free expressive mark making. And then I watered down some acrylic paint and on my long brush, I started going over some of those marks and forging new marks with the liquid um, acrylic. I sped this footage up about two to two and a half times.
It's dry. Okay, so yesterday I shot some footage on breaking the surface on these paintings with my long handled pencil and long handled brushes. Um, and today I'm going to break the surface on this newly gessoed sheet of paper in a different way. I'm going to start by tearing up some old paintings. use some Liquitex matte medium to uh, glue these down to the gessoed paper. Just randomly, no plan. Remember, we're just breaking the surface. I love that there's some pastel on this, on the torn up paper, and it, it may be neo color or it may be pastel, I'm not sure what it is, but it's smearing onto the paper, the gesso paper that I'm attaching it to. That's kind of a fun bonus. I'm going to rip up this little painting into pieces and attach some of those pieces to these paintings for another, an additional layer on those. And these are all really great exercises for days when you feel stuck. You just, it's just not flowing, the energy's not flowing. You could just break the surface on a dozen pieces of paper or a dozen paint backgrounds in art journal pages. Actually, that's a good idea. We should maybe try that to take old palette scrapings and just take a, a palette knife and scrape them over your next journal page so that you're ready. You know, when you open your journal, you have a background that you can work with. The surface is the white surface. The terrifying white blank surface is already broken. So here's some tips when we're doing these first intuitive layers of breaking the surface. Don't rip up paintings that your heart is really in love with because you're gonna wanna save, you're gonna want every little piece to show. Just rip up paintings that didn't work, that have elements that you feel might work in a new piece of work better. Um, and then don't think about the shapes that you're ripping them in too much. Just just rip in place. This is just a breaking the surface. It's just an underlayer. It's most of it's not going to show as you put other layers on. Some of it will peek through, but this is just a purely intuitive part of the process. So just really let yourself free yourself up. Don't get attached to these beginning layers and just place, just have fun, play, play with these early layers that are going on to your surface. That's why it's good probably to do a few at the same time because you can sort of walk away, you can move through them. And I think moving through one to the other helps you from freezing up and, and trying to push it too far or pr trying to make it something too early in the process. Okay, I thought I'd give you a little uh, more of a close-up view of what I'm doing. I Because these paintings that I'm ripping up, um, are so thick 
they're they're like these what these will be there's a lot of layers on these layers of gesso and paint and other mixed media so they're very thick and the liquitex um matte medium was a little thin it was having a hard time holding them down so i have switched to the golden matte medium and that seems to be holding them a little better so i'm going to do one more piece in this area and then i'm going to move on to this this one back here so let's see i take some of the golden matte medium and I'm gonna slop it onto there. And then I just plop that down backwards and give the back a good coat and then peel it off. Now this works because this is thick. This is gessoed and this is thick. If you did that with a thinner piece of paper, more fragile, you would wanna um, put your gesso on your, or your matte medium on your back first, off, you know, to the side, and then put it on the gessoed background and be a little more careful with it. But these pieces are so thick, they can take a lot of abuse. Okay, I think that looks all good. So now I'm gonna move this one off the easel and put this one on. So now I've got these really great monochromatic backgrounds started. And then this one, this background that has a little bit of color in it. And what I'm gonna do is take this painting and rip a few pieces off of this painting so that I can bridge some of these shapes and um, make a connection and add a little bit of color. The, this may not be the colors that I stick with, for the entire painting, but I'm going to use them as a bridge between these shapes. Another thing I was thinking about um, while I was doing this, one of the advantages of using matte medium or gloss medium, you know, people use decoupage, there's all kinds of things that you can use to do this. I've heard of some people using watered down Elmer's glue, although I've never tried it, but I think that's kind of what decoupage um, is. But um, when you have a coating over these pieces of the painting that you're putting down, later on in the painting process, it's easier to scrape back down to that layer. If you want to take a baby wipe or a damp paper towel or even just a paint scraper palette knife, you can scrape back down and, and get back to some of that layer because it's protected by the matte medium. Okay, so I'm gonna add some of these torn up pieces to bridge some color and then let these dry. I don't usually allow, I allow, I don't usually leave a sharp edge. I usually try to rip, rip those down. Sometimes they end up in there though, just because I'm just allowing myself to be so out of my head, I'm not thinking about it. Another thing, that I was thinking while I was doing this is, just because you're trying to stay intuitive doesn't mean you have to rush. Although working fast is a good way to stay intuitive. Um, but you can pause and you may see me pause and move a piece around. I'm still not really thinking about composition in any more than an intuitive sense. Like does this feel right here? What does it feel right here? I'm not thinking about what type of composition 
I'm doing. Is it a circular composition? Is it a cross composition? You know, is it a, a reversed steel yard composition? I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm just feeling my way through these under layers to see what feels right. So that's an important point. If you're more comfortable staying in an intuitive state, um, working slow, by all means work slow. Don't feel like you have to rush through the process. But for those of you that are really able to get into the flow and it, and it will come the more you do it, you can just sort of blow through your first under layers uh, with ease and staying fully in a um, intuitive state and, and come out with great underpaintings. So, okay, let's do some of these. Okay, so again, a reminder that when you finish with your matte medium to take a baby wipe and give the top a good wipe to get any of that, because it's glue. It's gonna, if you don't get that extra off, it'll glue your top down. So clean off that part and the inside of this, give that a wipe with a baby wipe. And then I take, I keep some um, coconut oil in a small Altoids container. I just take some of that out, with my finger, and go around the edge. You just want a small amount because you don't want it to get inside the container. Works really good. Works good with paints too, paints that come in jars. And then I wipe a little along the edge of the top. And it keeps that really nice and clean and easy to open. Hot tip. <laughs> okay, so these are drying. The under layers on these, I'm pretty happy with how they are. You know, it's funny because when you reach this stage, there's always a point where I'm like, oh, I really like it. I don't want to go any further, which is fine if that's what you want to do. I really like that monochromatic one there. But I am going to go further with them, but where we're just doing a background, just breaking the surface to come back to at another time, to be worked on at another time. Now, I don't know um, how long this video is gonna run. I don't know if we will actually bring one of these paintings to completion, but I, I definitely wanted to give you some different ways to break the surface. So um, I'm gonna go have lunch and then we'll see. Maybe I'll be back this afternoon. Maybe I'll be back tomorrow. See you in a little bit. Good morning. Today is day three, three <laughs> of uh, this experimentation with breaking the surface on three different sheets of paper. This one and this one, I feel really happy with how they are with their initial layers. And, are, and I feel like when I get back to them, I'm ready to move forward. This one we didn't do too much on. Um, I really focused on those more, but I'd like to take this one a little further today, but with some different materials. I got out my art graph, and it is, they're water-soluble graphite blocks, if you're not familiar with what they are. 
in the shape of Taylor's chalk. So that will be fun to play with. And I also got out my ink tents pencils. So these are water soluble ink pencils. So I thought those would be fun to play with, with, the, uh, with a layer on this. And to activate these, I'll be using water, spray bottle, but I'm also going to have some clear gesso. Oh, and some, where's my white gesso? And some white gesso. And I think I've got some baby wipes. I think that's all I'm gonna need. I've got my paper towels. I think I'm set. I'm going to take this, this uh, surface down and put this one up on the easel so that I can work on it. You know, get a little distance from it while I'm working on it. I have a roller that I may use, some different kinds of scrapers, metal and rubber, a larger brush, larger scraper. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with some of the white gesso. That's one of the things I was mentioning yesterday was that when you put like the clear gesso or the matte medium or gloss medium on and you cover over it, you can scrape back down to your initial layer if you feel like you've lost something that you want. And the other thing is too, remember to stand back frequently. It's something that I often forget to do because I get so into the process but um, you really do need to stand back even in this intuitive sort of um, 
breaking the surface type painting, just laying a ground because you, if you're too, up too close, you, you get too involved in the little details and the fussiness of it. When you stand back, you can get, um, you really get a greater sense of the whole. Uh-oh, I mixed up my gessos. <laughs> I think that's the clear. I don't know, though. That might be the solid. So I feel like I need uh, something a little more liquid feeling. I'm liking the lines. I'm liking the drawn lines um, a lot, actually. But I, I also feel like I need something more flowy. So I got out one of my silk painting brushes and some Black Cat, Black Cat Waterproof India Ink. I'm gonna give that a go. See a bird there. <laughs> his beak, his breast, and his tail feathers. When you see something like that, depending on how strongly it speaks to you, you can actually choose to accent that, or you can choose not to. I'm not sure. Not sure if I want to or not, but Seems how my hand keeps going. I'm feeling like it's telling me to accent it. But it may go away, we'll see. There we go. I hope this is the clear gesso, I mixed them up. Yes, it is. But it doesn't matter because it's turning it black. serendipitous. These things happen. You kind of got to go with the flow, you know? Wow, I'm liking it. There again, that's that clear gesso underneath allowing me to wipe back the layers. Okay, so, you know, sometimes you just don't wanna get fussy. Sometimes you really wanna just stay away from getting fussy, but sometimes something shows up like that. The name of my studio um, when I worked professionally at silk painting was Crow House Studio and crows and ravens are my kindreds. I feel like they're my totem animals. So when something like that shows up so clearly, I kind of have to go with it. I kind of 
kind of can't let it be. I feel like they're speaking to me. So there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, seeing something and, go, and going with it. If you really feel like it's speaking to you. And it may change the whole direction of your, you know, now your broken surface may go forward into a painting. Whoa, okay. Stuff is blowing all over the studio. I gotta pause. Okay, so I had to pause. My paintings are all flying off my little shelves here. It's a really mild day and I have windows open on that end of the studio and on that end of the studio and it's causing a, a cross breeze. And my little dogs were both over here looking around and the paintings flew off and hit them in the head. Poor babies. Nico, Nico, what happened? And then my light was blowing over while I was videoing. So I had to rig up the chair and a weight. <laughs> oh, well, it's such a gorgeous day. And I wanna finish up this part of the filming so I can get outside and go for a walk. So here we are so far. Wow, I'm liking it a lot so far. And it's funny because in the very start when we were collaging and um, doing some line drawing and stuff on all three pieces, I was really loving the two bigger pieces. That piece. And I just had, I wasn't liking this at all. I wasn't liking where it was going. But you know, another day, everything changes. Another day and it, it's just something, it's my favorite now. Okay, so let me see if I can hopefully get the camera back in the same position. Okay, so after that break that the wind gave me, I am very much aware that this is moving from um, just a breaking the surface background into a painting. And that is such a lovely thing when that happens. When you get into a piece, especially when you didn't like it to begin with, you know, I, I just didn't like where I had it this morning from the work I did on it yesterday. And then you just get into it and um, it just starts to open up in front of you and these images just start to show up. That's the best. <laughs> That's the best when that happens. So I'm going to continue on with this and uh, I don't know if I will film the whole thing. I'll do a little more filming and then I may just stop filming work on it and I'll post a picture on Instagram when it's finished. And it may be finished today, but it, it probably won't. I feel like I want to sort of take my time with it.
Okay, so it's been three days of breaking the surface and videoing it for you guys, and I have had so much fun. And I came away, I started out really not feeling inspired. Um, the first day when I put those first marks down, I felt inspired. The second day I came into the studio, didn't feel inspired at all, so I started another uh, surface, another blank surface to break and didn't like how that was going, but bounced, I bounced between all three. And um, that was so helpful. It was so helpful to have the different surfaces to work on and to sort of move when one felt a little stale to move from one to the other. And then this last one, you know, clearly has turned and is becoming a painting. And that was so exciting because it just flowed right through the day and then the bird showed up, whether it's a raven or a crow, and he's holding all these threads and there's these sort of egg shapes. And I think I'm just going to finish this another time rather than try to push to get it, to get it finished um, for the video. I'd really like to take my time with it, but I'm excited about it. I really, I really love where this is going. So breaking the surface, it's so much fun when you're feeling uninspired, have, and the sheets don't have to be this big. As a matter of fact, my intention, if you remember, for this one was to tear it up. I was just going to um, break the surface with different uh, collage and mark making, and then I was gonna tear it into smaller pieces. You can do this in an art journal, you can do this on a canvas, on a panel, it just doesn't matter. But it is loads of fun. It's a great way to get unblocked great way to get started and to feel inspired and who knows you may even come out with something out of all of your experiments that you really love so we'll see where this goes i'll post it on instagram when i'm finished i may even post it before as a work in progress and um here they are and this is my mess <laughs> that i have to clean up okay guys i think i'm going to close it out here Thanks so much for joining me. I really enjoyed making this video for you. I hope that you enjoy it too. I hope that you get some, some good ideas out of it, some good inspiration out of it, and that good things happen in your studio as a result of watching this video. Even if you just watched it to relax, to have a relaxing afternoon, to watch something creative, that's great too. I'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of my videos. All of those things, the liking, subscribing, and leaving comments really help me in the Yahoo algorithms. I hope you have a great week and that you feel inspired to create, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.